It's something we've seen time and again. The most recent case in the news, Daniel Gristwood, wrongfully convicted after falsely confessing to brutally attacking his wife. Good evening, everyone. I'm Carrie Lazarus. And I'm Rod Wood. You wonder how someone could admit to a crime they never committed. Well, it happens more often than you may think. The Innocence Project found that 35% of false confessions come from people who are developmentally disabled or under the age of 18. Governor Cuomo was pushing for a bill to require DNA samples from every criminal convicted in New York. Supporters say an expanded database could be a powerful tool for defunding the wrong, defending the wrongfully accused. Tonight, News Channel 9's Tammy Palmer shows us how hours of interrogation can end with the wrong person going behind bars. At the impressionable age of 16, Jeffrey Deskovic became a murder suspect. Police led him to an isolated room far from home where he endured seven and a half hours of interrogation. By the time it was over, by the police officer's own testimony, I was on the floor, I was crying, I was in the fetal position. After serving 16 years in prison for the death of a classmate, DNA evidence freed Deskovic, who has spent the rest of his life trying to explain why he confessed to a crime he did not commit. Uh, being young, naive, frightened, uh, 16 years old, not thinking about the long-term implications, uh, you're an emotional wreck and you're tired and worn down. Hundreds of others have walked in those shoes, including 14-year-old Michael Crow, accused of killing his sister. What? God, I don't, I, no, I don't know. I didn't do it. I swear to that. Over time, Crow broke, offering investigators any explanation to stop the questioning. A true confession is one that's given knowingly, intelligently, and voluntarily without any physical or psychological coercion. Forensic psychiatrist Dr. Cecilia Leonard says the young and mentally vulnerable are more likely to collapse under pressure. The law allows interrogators to present false evidence of guilt, to tell suspects they were identified by witnesses, or to suggest they'll be let go if they cooperate. Experts say once a false confession is made, wrongful convictions are more likely. When you get into a jury room, you believe that that could never happen to anybody. So if you hear a confession, you are very willing to believe that the person did it. Uh, the problem is years of research shows that it is quite possible for it to happen to you. False confessions or guilty pleas were made in 25% of cases where convicted defendants were later exonerated by DNA evidence. According to the Innocence Project, Daniel Gristwood of Pennellville spent years in jail for the murder of his wife until another man came forward, a case that could cost taxpayers millions. The problem prompted the New York State Bar Association to study reforms, including videotaping interrogations. God. Oh, God. You have a full record, uh, a full objective record of the whole interrogation and uh, any sort of inappropriate intimidation. Opponents argue the cost and training for detectives to oversee hours of taping could be a logistical nightmare. Others worry that interrogation methods would be exposed to future suspects who are guilty. Those police uh, jurisdictions that have made uh, videotaping compulsory feel more relief because they too are protected from false accusations. Onondaga County's DA Bill Fitzpatrick has supported the idea and Syracuse police record full questioning for what they consider serious crimes, but it's up to their discretion. Efforts to make it mandatory stalled in the state legislature. Meanwhile, Deskovic has been awarded six and a half million dollars in compensation. He says the real killer in his case demonstrates an even greater cost for the public. Left free to strike again since I was wrongfully arrested and convicted of the crime. Uh, he killed a school teacher three and a half years later. It's important to note the state's DNA database is only available to prosecutors. If defense attorneys believe the real criminal is in the database, they are not given access to test for a match. New York's chief judge says that should change. Tammy Palmer, News Channel 9. Now in Albany, the state senate has approved the database expansion. The bill is now in the hands of the state assembly.